bum, 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 bum. Here it is, the greatest minifigure of all time. The one of a kind and exclusive, Old Luke Skywalker. Echto Island Training has 241 pieces. It's set number 75200, but its price is a bit high, so some would say it had lukewarm reception. Speaking of warm, in this set we get the recreation of the Skywalker Saber using the classic hilt with a trans light blue uh, blade. and. Uh, because the hilt is chrome, it really feels like this is an important piece, which is nice to get that extra effect on there. You go, oh yeah, this is an important piece. This is Luke's lightsaber. You know, we can't throw this out. So anyways, but what about the hut? Well, Luke always needs a hand. And in this case, it's holding his lightsaber. So we're going to take his staff and we're going to turn around to the interior of the hut, revealing, of course, that it's only half a hut, giving you good access no matter what hand size and helping with that is the removable roof as you can see and you can put it right here there's a little jumper plate and this little holder piece that goes around it now inside this is clearly meant to be Luke's quarters in the film with the exception of the door which is cloth unlike the film version which has a x-wing piece although it was ripped off by Chewy so I imagine they had to replace that um, spoilers. Um, otherwise, there's a bed that can fold up, which is a nice little feature, a torch, a pan right there, a mug, a fish, some plants, and a little holder backpack thing that's usually used on minifigures but stuck there in the back. And you get a nice little space that Luke can sort of just hang out in, which of course he would do by standing and jumping on his bed. Now, Let's take a closer look at uh, a special feature which is on the interior but affects the exterior, which is a not so dramatic explosion of the side of the hut. Now, this could be based on, or at least inspired by, some elements of the film. I'm thinking in particular an early moment, uh, possibly featuring Ray. But let's get on to the other exclusive functions for this set, which are the stone. As you can see here, this removable stone has a little crystal on the inside. That, unfortunately, is not a major plot device in the film, so it's no spoiler in showing that. And what you can do is use Ray with her staff or the lightsaber, stick it on this little spinner thing, which is entirely hand spun and use her staff to knock over the rock and possibly cause Ray to fall in severe back pain, which is a real issue nowadays with all of our phone use. But that's irrelevant. If you're lucky, you are able to crack open the rock and get to the blue interior, which causes a nice little effect. But otherwise, it's a nice little thing, nice little feature. You get to sh kind of recreate, if you've seen in the trailer, the rock that uh, Ray is sort of training around. Um, and I think there's a bit more to it too, but I'm not gonna go into detail about that. Uh, otherwise, the exterior is good. It feels like the movie version. And if you put on the exclusive stickers for this set, which I chose not to, apologies for that, um, you do get some of that pattern of the rock work that are featured on its structure. Um, otherwise, you get some of that with these sort of teeth pieces. Uh, the stone on the outside and um, you have two removable sections kind of like the roof which are held on by pins and can be located on any of these three sides to sort of change your environment and I think that works quite well and finally let's talk about our good friend hiding over here the only non minifigure character in the set and its color is exclusive to this set although it is featured as well in the UCS Falcon. But a tiny little Porg! Isn't that cute? It's got wings using the quarter round tiles and the semi-rounded front tile. 
uh, and its head is a BB-8 head. And again, it's got the exclusive color scheme, but that's a nice little addition to getting you a very good sense of the island's environment. Um, one thing that would have been nice to see would have been the, uh, the little alien nun characters. Those were quite fun. But otherwise, this is a pretty good set. But before we go, let's take a close look at those minifigs. So here we have our first minifigure, which is the Force Awakens Rey from her ending scene in that film as she goes to Act 2 to visit Luke. Um, and in that film, she featured the tan vest with the gray undershirt. And on this minifigure, there's a couple of belt buckles and stuff, which is nice. Um, this character features two faces, and she's wearing her classic three bun hair. So this is all her costume from the beginning of The Last Jedi. And she also features her staff. So if we turn her around here, we can take a look at that sort of mold design and stuff in the back of the, the printing, which uh, includes uh, the waistlines um, and some general sort of patterning from that would be kind of like what the fabric would have. Uh, and if we remove the hair, we get her other face, which has this smirk, which I think um, is different than other rays that were created. And I think this one is much more sort of accurate to the way she sort of smiles, um, which is nice. So I think she's a pretty good minifigure. Um, not super detailed, especially in the face design, but I think you get a very good vibe from the character. And I think it works very well for, um, for Ray and for Daisy Ridley. Um, so let's go on to the Luke Skywalker minifigure. Now let's take a look at Luke Skywalker in his Itch 2 costume. Act 2 costume? Atch 2 costume? Itchy Toe costume? H2O costume? Whatever the island's name is. And he's got his staff and he's got his exclusive new hair mold and a face print which I think very much captures the feel of Luke in the film. Although I would agree that his costume colors seem a bit off, maybe too light in some parts. With the uh, belt and stuff, that's good. And the general vibe, which is sort of the reversal of the traditional Jedi garb colors, the white on the exterior, the tan in the interior, I think works together to really sell what he looked like in the film, in that sense. Um, if we go around to the back, we get to see what that mold, hair mold, looks like. It's not quite a mullet, but you could sort of use it in a sort of 70s style. And with his cape, if you flip it up, you get the same garb pattern on the back printing, which is nice. And the belt continues back there, as usual, not on the sides. Uh, behind his hair, we get to see angry Luke. Oh, and boy is he angry. Urgh, I'm confused about my character motivation. But that's okay, Luke, because every Skywalker has to be angry at some point. And you know what? I really like this figure. I like his design. You've got enough detail in it to really sell you that it's Luke. Um, in terms of what else is important of this figure is his classic metallic hand. It could also be the hand with the glove on it um, as well. Either way, I think that works quite well for the character, having his hand be a different color, which is... I mean, an obvious thing to do, but it's still nice to have it. And overall, it's a good figure. So, yeah. And finally, just to sort of summarize the whole thing, I enjoyed this set. Yes, it's a little overpriced, but in terms of what you get, the dynamic that the set presents um, is fulfilling. You get a lot of little functions. You really get an environment for where you can imagine Luke Skywalker hanging around, whether or not it's in front of this fire, or, you know, scolding Ray or whatever. And uh, hopefully they get more stuff from this island, such as the tree or the other sort of interior-related temple sections, um, because I'd like to see more sets at this location. So I guess that's about it for this set. What do you think of this set? Let me know in the comments, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.